The Helwyn HA-300 is another attempt by an economically lesser country to develop their own fighter, much like Argentina and India. The programs also suffered nearly the same problems with mostly the inability to find a proper jet engine. But first, before we dive deep into the plane, we need to discuss the motivations behind its creation. Starting in July 1952, army officers ousted the monarchy and set Egypt on an ambitious course of land reform, industrialization, and rearmament. Their leader was Gamal Abd al Nasser, a charismatic army colonel who intended to make Egypt the leading power in a newly independent Middle East in North Africa. Nasser believed that Egypt must avoid entanglement in superpower struggles, and he became an ear early adherent to the non-aligned movement, forged by India and Yugoslavia. Yet, the non-aligned movement alone would not give Nasser the autonomy he craved. Just as Peron pursued economic autarky, so too did Nasser, eventually wanting to nationalize industry, create export create import substitutes, and expropriate property owners. Self-sufficiency helped drive Egypt's jet fighter project. During the 1948-49 Arab-Israeli War and the 1956 Suez Conflict, British and American arms embargoes hampered Egyptian military operations. As a result, Egypt saw long-term self-sufficiency in weapons production, but for the short term, she diversified her arms suppliers to include the Soviet Union. The symbolic importance of aviation for Nasser's regime cannot be understated, much as the Soviets did with their annual May Day and October, October Revolution parades. The Egyptians used the anniversary of the 23rd July 1952 coup to showcase military hardware. For instance, in 1964, Egyptian made, they were actually Spanish, HA-200 jet trainers flew above Cairo. Three years later, the HA-300 jet fighter was rolled out for public viewing. Finally, just as Argentina had proudly announced that it was only the eighth country to build an indigenous jet fighter, so too did Egypt declare that it was the sixth country to design a supersonic jet. When the HA-300 conducted its maiden flight in 1964, the military rationale for the HA-300 was rather vague. In 1960, discussions with American diplomats, Nasser, made the case that Egypt was losing the arms race with Israel, in part because the latter was acquiring supersonic aircraft from France. Nasser admitted he was seeking the Soviet MiG-19 to correct this imbalance. However, this confession undercut a military argument for investing scarce resources in a costly supersonic domestic fighter when cheaper, more reliable imports were available. While the domestic fighter might have eventually saved money that would otherwise have been spent on imports, it certainly did not mean that overall cost per plane would be lower. Rather, the contrary. Egypt may have been counting on export sales to other Arab states to keep the unit costs down. For example, Algerian President Ahmed bin Bella considered purchasing the HA-300, but opted out for Soviet aircraft instead. Now we're discussing the program history. Egypt embarked on its indigenous fighter quest with a basic aircraft design and licensed production capability. Built in 1950, Helwyn's Aircraft Factory 36 was originally intended to produce the British de Havilland Vampire. However, that project floundered due to fraying UK-Egypt relations in the 1950s. In 1959, the factory was retooled for production of Spain's HA-200 SATA jet trainer. Next door to Factory 36 was a separate plant dedicated to designing and producing jet engines based on the reverse engineering of several French models. 
This infrastructure was meager when measured against the daunting requirements of designing and eventually producing a viable supersonic jet fighter. For starters, Egypt lacks, lacked experts, tools, materials, and wind tunnels. To correct for some of these shortcomings, Egypt recruited Wilhelm Messerschmitt, who had designed the first operational jet fighter, the Luftwaffe's Messerschmitt 262. Messerschmitt had been in Spain working on a Delta Wing fighter capable of Mach 2, but Madrid canceled the project in 1960 because of spiraling costs and cheaper American alternatives. Cairo, which had just purchased the rights to produce the HA-200, now acquiring the plans and tooling for the HA-300 as well. Originally, the HA-300 was built around the British Orpheus 703 engine, but British production ceased before the HA-300 prototypes were completed, and Egypt had only a few on hand. In any case, the Egyptians had decided to produce their own jet engines, even though this was an ambitious undertaking itself. However, Cairo was not deterred by the formidable challenges involved in designing and producing jet engines. To this day, few countries have consistently and successfully developed their own jet engines, and Egypt is not one of them. Even so, the Egyptians had recruited some outstanding foreign talent, such as Austrian Ferdinand Brander, Brandener, who had developed engines for the Nazi Germany and the Soviets. Once Brandner's contract was inked, he recruited some 250 German and Austrian engineers, technicians, and scientists to work alongside the Egyptians at Helwan. In 1963, this team conducted its first static engine test of the new E-300 power plant, the engine intended for the HA-300. Engine development costs posed a major challenge, but Fortune intervened when Brandner learned of Indian interest in the E-300. As will be seen, Kurt Tank was helping India design a supersonic jet fighter called the HF-24, which lacked an adequate engine. In 1963, Brandner led a de delegation to India, where he met Tank and negotiated a deal under which India would share E-300 costs, donate a modified HF-24 capable of carrying the E-300, and train Egyptian test pilots and contribute a senior Indian test pilot to assist in the HA-300 development. Egypt and India trumpeted the symbolic value of their new association. After all, these two non-alive movement giants working together on a shared dream of producing combat jets outside the superpower monopoly. As the Indian test pilot, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, commented later, the Indian press was still full of Euphoria generated by this. On seeing a hint of collaboration between India and Egypt, they, they wrote learned editorials on the emergence of a third military bloc of the non-aligned and its impact on the global balance of military power. The HA-300 first flew on March 7, 1964, and a total of 135 test flights were completed before the program was halted in May 1969. Reasons for failure are Nasser's political fortunes peaked between 1957 and 1961, and this period con coincided with Egypt's pursuit of indigenous jet fighters and ballistic missiles. Nasser thrived on power symbols during these years, and the most prominent of these was the high dam being built at Aswan. However, the dam was not alone. For every anniversary of the 23rd July 1952 coup featured a new weapon, such as the HA-200 jet fighter in 1960 and the two-stage al raid ballistic missile in 1963. On the 23rd of July 1963, Egyptians unveiled another triumph to highlight their progress in national defense. When Indian test pilot Kapil Guevara taxied the HA-300 in front of Nasser, Anwar, Zaldat, and others, according to the Bargava's later account. When 
the Egyptian president asked him for his opinion of the plane. Bargava replied that the plane was an interesting research product, but it would never enter production. In response, Nasser just smiled. I concluded that, despite any difficulties that might hinder the project, he had his reasons for persisting with it, and that would be too under control of foreigners. He obviously believed that a successful flight test would be sufficient to strengthen his hand in international negotiations. None of Nasser's indigenous weapons ever achieved military success. The ballistic missile program was a costly failure, while the HA-300 limped along until the 1967 Israeli-Arab War put an end to it. Yet as the test pilot observed, Nasser did not view the HA-300 as a military priority, but rather as a useful, if costly, symbol that betrayed his regime's claims to legitimacy. We have already seen how if German aviation experts encountered cultural differences with their Argentine colleagues, and the same was true in Egypt, where Messerschmitt's reputation for being an opinionated perfectionist graded on Egyptian and Indian sensitivities as well. Matters only got worse when Messerschmitt fired some of his staff and the Egyptians failed to pay the salaries on time, promising Egyptian-Indian partnership was married by accord. <clears throat> At least some Indian officials erroneously believed that Egypt would eventually buy the HF-24 along with the E-300 power plant. However, the Egyptians had no intention of doing so, and their problems with the Indians were aggravated by technical difficulties that plagued and ultimately killed the E-300 project. Moreover, while Cairo made much of its Egyptian-made fighter, the fact remained that it was designed by a German, tested in European wind tunnels, employed foreign parts, and relied on a British engine. Unlike the Argentines, who made a spirited bid to ensure that the Polki II used domestically produced components, that could not be the same for Egyptians' efforts with the HA-300. Cost was always a major issue for the Egyptians who were committing scarce foreign currency reserves and technical talent to several projects like the high dam, steel factories, and ballistic missiles. According to one estimate, the HA-300 program cost was over 100 million Egyptian pounds or the equivalent of Egypt's total investment in its civilian industry throughout the 1960s. The June 1967 war, which had began with a preemptive Israeli air raid that destroyed much of the Egyptian air force on the ground, doomed the HA-300. In the aftermath of that humiliation, Nasser needed a new air force and fast. He could not afford to pour more money into a white elephant jet fighter that was already obsolete. Only the Soviets could address the immediate needs of the devastated Egyptian Air Force. And the result was cancellation of the HA-300 in return for procuring the superior MiG-21 at favorable prices. Long-term consequences are that Egypt never designed and produced jet fighters. According to one source, the Helwyn aviation plants were forced to lay off 500 workers. Hundreds of skilled experts fled to aviation programs in North America, and Helwyn reported to producing parts for Egypt's Soviet-built fighters. As for the HA-300, all that remains is a static display at a German aviation museum.